Section 11L allows an employer to deduct, claim a deduction for contributions that it made to its employees' pension, provident, and retirement annuity funds. Now, let me explain to you. So, for example, let's say you are working for your employer, and a lot of you guys might even have this, where the employer says to you, you need to contribute, let's say, to a provident fund. You need to contribute 5% of your salary to a provident fund, your monthly salary, and we will also contribute, the employer will also contribute 5%. Now, all of these amounts which the employer pays, so when they say, I, as the employer, I'm paying an amount to my employee's pension, provident, or retirement annuity fund. The employer can claim all of those. So just in simple terms, you want to read it. It says, first of all, the preamble. You must be carrying on a trade. Then it says, you can deduct any amount contributed by a person that is an employer for the benefit of an employee to a pension fund, provident fund, or retirement annuity fund. And then important here, in terms of the rules of that fund. Now what this means is, if an employer decides to just make its own contributions, the employer, and it's not amounts which they are obliged to do, they might not be able to claim this deduction. They wouldn't be able to. It must be in terms of the rules of the fund. Now, they'll have to tell you in an exam if it's not in terms of the rules of the fund. The rules of the fund is what the fund says. How does this provident fund work? This provident fund works. Each employee must contribute 5%. And the employer will con contribute an additional 5%. Those are the rules of the fund. So that means the employer can claim that. Please also note that if the employer makes any contribution to a dependent or a nominee of a deceased employee or a former employee, it will also be. So um, Mr. X worked for X Limited. In terms of the rules of the fund, it says if Mr. X has to, has to pass away for one year, X Limited still needs to contribute to that fund because this fund will be paid out to Mr. X's wife and children, let's say. Right. X Limited can still claim it in that case. Guys, please note that this only is for pension, provident, and retirement annuity fund. It does not apply to medical aid contributions made by the employer. This you will have to test under the general deduction formula. General deduction formula again, when you're carrying on a trade, during the year of assessment, expenditure or losses actually incurred in the production of income not of a capital nature so if you have an employment contract with your employee it says I will make a contribution to your medical aid it should be allowed as a deduction under the general deduction formula then we have section 11M section 11M is if you make a payment of an annuity to an employee or their dependents now let's quickly just talk about this there were court cases in the past that said, what is the characteristics of an annuity? It is an annual payment. It is repetitive, so it repeats. And there is an obligation to pay. Now, let's just use this as an example. I want to get your head in the game here. So, X Limited has a policy that it will pay an annuity equal to 50% of an employee's final salary when the employee resigns. So let's just use that. Now, what, so what does this mean? So this employee, you work for X Limited, and now, and your final salary was 10,000 rands a month, then you resign, and after that, X Limited will continue paying you 5,000 rands a month, okay, for however long, but let's say it meets the requirements of an annuity. The question is, can X Limited then claim that as a deduction? Now let's ignore this special section for now and talk about general deduction formula. Would you be able to claim that amount? Now, if you just made a decision to pay this to an employee and there's no employment contract, then you would not be able to claim it because this is not in the production of income. You're paying something to someone who has already left. If there was an employment contract that said it, that's a different story because then it's in terms of an employment contract which is in the production of income. Right, but Section 11M is here to solve this. And Section 11M says, 
you will be allowed to claim any amount paid by way of an annuity to a former employee who has retired of old age, ill health or infirmity, or to a person who was for a period of at least five years a partner and who has retired from old age, ill health or infirmity, or to any person who is dependent for his maintenance upon a former employee or former partner and was so dependent immediately prior to his death. Okay, so let's talk about it. So number one says, if you pay an annuity to an employee who has retired from your business and are no longer working to you because of old age, ill health, that includes death or infirmity, then you can claim it. So, if a person is 30 years old and they just decide, and they're working for you and they decide they're just going to change jobs and you pay them an annuity, nice on you, but you can't claim a deduction because the employee did not retire from old age, ill health or infirmity. Number two here, just quickly about a partner, because this talks about employees, they're just trying to sell to you here. Usually a partner is not considered a, an employee of a partnership. But they say, if a partner has been a partner for at least five years, you can treat them as if they are. So you can claim an annuity to them. Right, not as common. Number three, a bit more common. Says, any of these two people we just discussed, if you're paying the annuity to a dependent of theirs, then you can still claim it. So let's say, Remember I said here, ill health includes death. So let's say X, Mr. X dies at work. He's a factory worker and he dies at work. Right, so ill health. He retires due to ill health. The company pays an annuity to his family. They'll still be able to claim it. That's what it means. Now guys, I just want to quickly talk about, while I was talking about this, this talks specifically about annuities. You get something which is called a gratuity. Now a gratuity is any amount of payment that you make, like a bonus payment, for example, is considered a gratuity. This is not discussed here. What a gratuity... Uh, this section even only applies to annuities, not to gratuities. You would still have to look at the general deduction formula for gratuities. Now, just one thing I want to mention to you is the following. And I, used it, I alluded to this earlier. Let's say Mr. X worked for your company for 30 years, and now he is retiring, and you decide to give him... 100,000 rands as a farewell bonus. Can you claim that as a deduction is the question. Now, you'll have to look at the general deduction formula. The biggest questions you're going to have here is, is it in the production of income? Now, guys, I'm not giving you all the rules here because you need to be able to reason this out. Now, if this company just decides to give this guy 100,000 rands to say thank you for all the years of service, they would probably not be allowed to claim it as a deduction because it's not in the production of income. You say thank you to a person for things that he's done in the past. This is not allowed. How do people then claim it? First up, if your employment contract says if you work for a period of 30 years, you can get a bonus. Then it is in terms of the employment contract, and anything that's in terms of a contract with your employees is in the production of income. So it should be allowed as a deduction. The other way of doing it is if you can prove that it's in the production of income. So, when this person leaves, if you, make, if you send out a communication, for example, to your firm, and this one, obviously you must have the right intentions behind it, we say to everybody else in your employment, listen, we're giving this guy a bonus because of all the years of hard work. Work hard, do well. We motivate you to do the same, and you can might also one day qualify for it. As long as you can prove that it's a reduction of income, remember the burden of proof is on you. Then you should be able to claim it. So gratuities, guys, any random payments to employees, Test it against the general deduction formula. Again, if it's in terms of an employment contract, it's usually allowed because your employee came to work to you specifically in order to um, sign a contract and to comply with what the contract says. So if you promise your employee things in terms of the contract, you should be allowed to claim as a deduction.